Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. This will be the final edition of No DQ and A video until Survivor Series, which is this coming Sunday on my birthday on the WWE Network for just $9.99. There you go, WWE. There's your cheap plug for the network. Hope you're happy. Anyways, got your questions here from Twitter.com slash Aaron Rift. First one today comes from Corby W. It's sad that Cesaro lost, but is it a good sign he looked strong? And could you see Cesaro joining Triple H? Of course Cesaro looked strong in that match. Him and Roman Reigns had a back and forth battle. I thought it was really good, but I do sympathize with the Cesaro section. I do feel frustrated that Cesaro isn't given more of a significant role in the company. He goes out there, he has great matches, but he doesn't win all that often, and he's just thrown into mid-card storylines. And I think he needs to be utilized better. Does he deserve the main event? I feel he does, but WWE doesn't feel that way. And if they do not want to put him in the top spot, that's fine. But he has so much credibility. When he goes out there, he is one of the best athletes that has ever stepped foot in a WWE ring. When he goes out there, you believe this guy's one of the best in the world. It makes sense for me to have Cesaro in a top position in the company. Doesn't have to be the face of the company. Doesn't have to be the next John Cena. But give him more meaningful storylines. Let him pick up some wins. And let him have the credibility that, that he can pull off. Because he is just an amazing athlete. And it's a shame that week in and week out, the fans really want to get behind the guy. But... They have very little to sink their teeth into. Now, with Triple H and Cesaro being an alliance, the problem with that is the fans want to cheer for Cesaro. He, I think, is best off as a babyface character. The stuff he does, it, it's so phenomenal, fans just go crazy for him. It's, it's not the kind of character that works well as a heel. The guy that swings people around and does these crazy uppercuts... That is stuff that baby faces do. All the um, impressive physical feats, it's stuff you want to cheer for. It's just natural for Cesaro to be a baby face in WWE. So pairing him up with Triple H really wouldn't do him that much good at this point. And when you look at the pairing of Cesaro and Paul Heyman, you know, that didn't work out either. So I, I think it's best to just keep him as a baby face, let him win more often, and give him some more. Um, long-term storylines that aren't just thrown together at random in the mid-card. All right, this one comes from Beast Slayer. Are you shocked that Kalisto went over on Ryback? Actually, I am. That was the one surprise outcome of this tournament. I guess WWE's attitude is that they want a new Rey Mysterio. They have Alberto Del Rio to represent the Hispanic audience, but they're looking for another guy. And they're looking for a guy that can sell masks. So, you know, they're giving Kalisto this push. And he's being portrayed very similar to Rey Mysterio. This underdog that can pull up a big upset at any time. Now, will he become as big of a star as Rey Mysterio? That remains to be seen. Um, I definitely feel he has potential to be significant in WWE. Uh, but who knows if they'll start having him talk too much or they'll do something to kill off his momentum. Time will tell. I mean, Rey Mysterio had a lot of charisma as well. So it's hard to say. I mean, Kalisto is really impressive in the ring. And um, maybe with the right push, he can be as marketable as Rey Mysterio. But, you know, that that's those are some big shoes to fill. Rey Mysterio was just a tremendous um, draw for WWE. Extremely marketable. Had the charisma. And he did everything right to connect with the fans. Um, Kalisto could be perhaps as big as Rey Mysterio. That remains to be seen, though. All right, this one comes from Andy. Do you think when Seth Rollins returns to presumably a massive pop, he will be babyface, similar to Triple H years ago? Absolutely. The only thing that makes sense is for Seth Rollins to return as a babyface. He got such a big reaction 
at shows like WrestleMania and SummerSlam. The fans have already been wanting to cheer for the guy. Similar to Cesaro. I mean, Seth Rollins is just such an incredible athlete. He does all these impressive things in the ring. And you cannot help yourself but cheer for this guy. You want to cheer for this guy because you really respect what he does and you appreciate his athlete. And I think Seth Rollins would just work very well naturally as a babyface when he comes back. He's done a tremendous job as a heel, but uh, coming off this injury, the fans are going to be rooting for him more than ever. Similar to when Triple H got hurt. You know, they showed the video packages of him coming back and, and, and doing all this stuff in the rehab. Um, same thing with, with uh, Seth Rollins. When he comes back, the fans are going to be missing him. And, uh, you know, he's going to get a huge reaction. So you just have to go with the babyface run. To bring him back and then turn him heel, um, that would just be flushing money down the toilet. Alright, this one comes from Rude Ben. Hey Aaron, with Ronda Rousey losing this weekend, do you feel that she'll leave USC sooner rather than later? I doubt it. I think that she's going to take some time off. And once she's ready to get back into the octagon, that's what she'll do. You know, ever since she lost that fight, everyone's been speculating, oh, this must mean Ronda Rousey's going back to WWE. And people are even speculating that the fight was worked, which is not the case at all. I think that one day we will see Ronda Rousey in a WWE ring. Do not see it happening at WrestleMania 32. I don't think this was some kind of elaborate plan for her to leave USC so she can go to WWE. I think she'll probably have another fight, maybe more if she wins her comeback fight. Um, a few years down the line, I think we will see Ronda Rousey in a WWE ring once it's clear her UFC career is over. But um, I don't see her going away because of one loss. I mean, she'll, she'll be back, I think, at some point. All right, this one comes from Ghost Bookseller. Did WWE kill any chance of making Christian a real star by making him lose the title to Orn five or two days after winning it? Not really, because WWE's plan was never to make Christian a long-term world champion. The idea was for him to be a transitional champion. And when Orn beat him for the title, fans were outraged over this. And I think if anything, it was the fan outrage and fans on the internet just complaining about this that forced WWE to change plans and they gave Christian more of a long-term push with Randy Orton and Christian actually got the belt back for a short time. Um, I think WWE pushed Christian that hard because of the backlash to Orton winning the title from him right away. I mean Christian's always been a cult favorite in WWE and fans were so happy when he finally won a world title only for him to lose it um, immediately to Randy Orton. That pissed off a lot of fans, a lot of diehard Christian fans, and uh, enough to the point where WWE actually did make a change. And every once in a while, when the fans complain and it, it's uh, vocal enough, WWE does listen to the audience and make changes. But um, it's not like they, they killed him off as the potential because Christian's always been, like I said, a cult favorite. Um, he never really was um, going to be a top tier superstar in WWE. I mean, really skilled performer, but at the end of the day, just not as marketable as a John Cena or a Roman Reigns or any number of people in WWE. I mean, he wasn't going to be that top tier superstar, but um, I definitely feel the fans getting behind him helped him get a bigger push than the company was really willing to give him. All right, this one comes from Domers. With SmackDown coming to USA Network next year, would that make them more open to getting rid of the third hour of Raw? Will not make any difference whatsoever. You have to keep in mind that Sci-Fi and USA Network are both owned by the same company, NBC Universal. Raw will continue to remain three hours as long as the three hour shows generate strong enough ratings by basic cable standards. USA Network, NBC Universal, they are in the business of making money. The third hour of Raw is bringing money in. It's bringing money to WWE. And even though three hours is a lot, and many feel that it's one of the reasons why WWE has gotten so stale lately because they've been oversaturated with television and it's just too much to watch a three-hour show every week. 
it's it's strictly business. It's a money maker for WWE right now, and as long as those ratings stay consistent, um, that's really the deciding factor if Raw will remain three hours or not. All right, this one comes from It's Delta Ghost. Do you think Kane and Shane McMahon's feud is underrated? Not really. I felt that that feud actually damaged Kane's character. WWE had taken the mask off of Kane and he got this new renewed push as a monster heel. And then all of a sudden he's feuding with Shane McMahon and Shane McMahon is going toe to toe with this monster Kane that they're trying to build up as uh, you know the top heel in the company. To me, it just watered down Kane, and it's not convincing to see Shane McMahon beating up Kane. Um, to me, it didn't work. I mean, it was bad enough when Shane was feuding with Kurt Angle and those guys. You know, it was hard to believe that Shane McMahon could beat up an Olympic gold medalist. But with Kane, you know, they were really trying to make Kane as dominant as possible, and then he's getting beat up by Shane. Um, you know, there were a few memorable angles that they did. Um, some would say too over the top, like when Kane electrocuted Shane's testicles. I mean, that was really over the top, but you know, it was memorable. I mean, I'm here I am today talking about it, uh, 12 years after it happened. Um, so, I mean, it was a, it was an interesting feud, but I wouldn't say it was underrated or anything like that. All right. This one comes from at not the fake booch. So who did Shelton Benjamin piss off to have his mama as his manager in 2006? Please answer in video. I do not think he pissed off anybody. I just think WWE wanted to add layers to the character and make him more of a sports entertainer. Um, with Shelton Benjamin, he was never all that strong on the mic and he didn't have all that much charisma. He was a tremendous athlete. Kind of sounds similar to Cesaro in a way. Um, but, you know, WWE wanted to try and do something with him to give him more depth as a sports entertainer. So, you know, Vince McMahon thought it would be funny if Shelton Benjamin had his mama come out and Shelton would be a mama's boy. Of course, it, it completely killed Shelton's credibility and nobody could take him seriously after that. But, you know, Vince felt that that was the way to make Shelton Benjamin more marketable, whatever. I mean, it was lame. All right, this one comes from Kevin Zwicker. What did WWE drop the ball on worse, Goldberg's run or Sting's run? Please answer in video. I've seen a lot of people online debate about this, and I would have to say that um, WWE dropped the ball more on Goldberg. And uh, I know people will argue that Goldberg won the world title and Sting did not. But with Goldberg, he was still able to go out there and work a full-time schedule, and he was WCW's biggest draw. I mean, Sting was the franchise, and he was there for a very long period of the time, and fans associated WCW with Sting, but Goldberg was really um, the biggest draw in WCW, and uh, WWE could have made a lot of money with Goldberg. With Sting, it was different because Sting was already past his peak, and he came into WWE um, as a legend, and the idea was only to, for him to do a couple matches, and you know I'm sure he'll go into the Hall of Fame and all that. Um, you know WWE's big mistake with Sting, in my opinion, was having him lose at WrestleMania. But it's not like Sting was going to be a major part of the company and be world champion and all that. With Goldberg, the idea was he would come in and be a top dominant superstar like he was in WCW. Um, so you know there were a lot of expectations for Goldberg. Um, that didn't work out. You know, WWE, uh, you know, they publicly said that they were disappointed with Goldberg's run. Uh, you know, it was pretty much a disaster right from the get-go. So, you know, I would say they dropped the ball with Goldberg just because you had so much potential with him to be a long-term top superstar in the company. With Sting, it was different. You know, you're bringing him in as a legend to have one or two matches and then go into the Hall of Fame. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks as always for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it on Facebook, Twitter, any social media site that you visit. Uh, tell a friend about No DQ and a video, and stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the latest regarding Survivor Series. I'll see you guys next time.